You're all very welcome to this 2018-2019 uh, Fulbright LLM Law Awards webinar. Today you're going to hear from myself, uh, Emma Lockney. I'm the Communications Manager with the Fulbright Commission in Ireland. Um, we're also joined by Leslie Davis, the Assistant Dean for International Programs, Mars School of Law. Sean O'Brien, Assistant Director at the Centre of Civil and Human Rights at the University of Notre Dame. And Elise Luz Kramer, Executive Director at the University of Pennsylvania Law School. Um, so each of these speakers is generously joining us today to tell us a little bit about their programs. Just to start off, I will um, tell you a little bit about Fulbright. Um, as some of you will know already, uh, this year only LLM applications to the following institutions or programs will be considered for the 1819 uh, Fulbright Irish Awards cycle. So those awards are the LLM Award to Indiana University Morris School of Law, um, the Fulbright Notre Dame LLM Award, the Fulbright Penn LLM Award, and each of these institutions offers um, successful candidates a partial tuition waiver um, along with their Fulbright Award. So as you can see here, um, they're quite significant, um, the partial tuition waivers um, at Morris School of Law. It's a $25,000 um, grant. Um, University of Notre Dame, it's a 50% tuition waiver. And then again, at Penn Law, it's a $25,000 grant um, for successful candidates. So for all our Fulbright Irish awards, um, there is also an addition to, to the tuition partial tuition waivers offered by those institutions, you would also receive a Fulbright Award monetary grant, uh, as well as visa administration, accident and emergency health insurance, orientation and programming, um, support while you're over in the US, so if your application is successful, um, you would receive support from our office here in Ireland, and um, we would give you a pre, pre pre-departure orientation and um, where we tell you all about what to expect in the US. You'd also be working, of course, with your host institution in the US in parallel. Um, and we have actually already done a webinar on the general application process for our awards this year. So if you missed that, you can find it on our YouTube channel. It's um, Fulbright Ireland. Our YouTube channel there has uh, this application process webinar, which explains all the important dates, um, the different award categories, uh, and essentially how to put together your application um, for your Fulbright Award. So please do check that out. There's also a number of videos on there that are very helpful um, for, for general awardees and also uh, specifically for law awards. Um, so our application period for the 2018-19 Fulbright Awards is open at the moment, and the deadline is 31st of October 2017. So in terms of eligibility for the Fulbright Awards, these are open to Irish citizens or EU citizens living in the Republic of Ireland for three or more years. Um, the minimum two, one undergraduate degree in law um, and a clear course of study, that's um, specifically for the law awards, obviously. You must also demonstrate academic and personal excellence. Strong rationale for going to the States, to the US, so why do you want to go and study uh, in the US rather than Ireland or Europe? Um, you should also demonstrate strong leadership skills or potential, and understanding and commitment to the ethos of being a Fulbrighter. So again, the um, Fulbright Awards are about cultural exchange as well as educational and academic. So please do um, check out our YouTube channel um, and uh, find out all about what, what Fulbright means. Um, we also have a very comprehensive alumni section on our website, www.fulbright.ie. I encourage you all to look at that, uh, look at testimonials from previous Fulbrighters. Um, if there are any Fulbrighters who have visited the institutions you wish to go to, we're happy to put you in touch with them. So do just have a look on our website in the alumni section um, and then contact us and we'd be happy to put you in touch. Also very important to note that for, for the Fulbright Awards, there is a two-year home rule, which means um, after completing your award in the US, you would need to come back to Ireland um, and fulfill two years uh, in your home country. Um, now, of course, if you're going to do a two-year course or 
something that's more than one year, one year you can uh, continue on to finish your degree, um, but it's uh, to do with working permit really. Um, unfortunately, U.S. Irish dual citizens are um, not eligible, and neither are green card holders or those currently resident in the U.S. And you shouldn't have extensive experience of studying in the, or living in the U.S. either. Um, now, don't worry if you've done a J1 or if you've spent a bit of time in the U.S., whether it's studying or on holidays. This really means, um, you know, once you've haven't spent the last five, eight, or six years, for example, in the U.S., um, you are probably eligible. But do bear in mind that those with um, less experience in the U.S. Um, would have preference. Would, get, would have preference, yeah. Okay. Now, just in terms of experiences, um, we've had a few students who have um, traveled to the US to undertake LLM awards. You can read about Ruth Cormican's recent experience um, on an LLM program in Notre Dame and about Rosemary Hannigan's uh, time at Penn Law. Um, they're all in our Tumblr um, blog. Um, they're also on our featured alumni section of our website. Um, you can watch a video about Irish students Dara McMullen and Connor Boyle um, and how they're enjoying their time at Moral Law. Um, you can also watch a video of Fulbright alumni Andrea Mulligan, who um, gave an interview a number of years ago about her LLM to um, the US. Uh, so we encourage you to watch all of those. Um, I will send you these slides, all the participants, the, these slides um, after the webinar, so you can um, have access to those those links. You don't need to note it down. So to find out more about the Fulbright Awards, as I mentioned, please do re um, look up our um, application process webinar from a couple of weeks ago. That's on our YouTube channel, Fulbright Ireland. We also encourage you to subscribe to our e news. Um, you can sign up on our website. If you're on a campus in Ireland, we have Fulbright Campus Ambassadors at uh, 17 institutions around the country, um, and they can be really helpful in guiding you through your application um, and kind of talking to you about their own experience as Fulbrighters. Um, as I mentioned before as well, you can talk to the wider Fulbright community. All you have to do is um, find out who you want to talk to by, by visiting our website and getting in touch with us um, through awards at fulbright.ie. Uh, that first dot there is not uh, necessary. So it's just awards at fulbright.ie um, and we'll, we'll put you in touch with our alumni. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, welcome to Mauer School of Law, Graduate in International Programs. I'm Leslie Davis. I'm the Assistant Dean for International Programs, and I'm going to introduce my two colleagues who are with me today and who are going to share the presentation. They are. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Goodwin. I'm the Director of Graduate Legal Studies and also uh, teach here at Mauer School of Law. Welcome. Hello, everyone. I am William Shad, Director of Graduate Admissions, and when you apply, I'll be assisting you from start to finish. Okay. As you can see on the map, hopefully, we are centrally located in the U.S. Uh, in fact, Indiana is known as the Crossroads of America because we have four of the country's main interstates crossing in our capital in Indianapolis. We are about one hour from Indianapolis, which has our international airport. And we are also very close to major cities in Chicago, which is about four to five hours, Cincinnati, Louisville, and uh, great access to the rest of the country from here. OK. Um, we are the ninth oldest law school in the United States. We are the fifth public law school in the U.S. and the first law school, public law school in the Midwest. Um, it may not seem very old to you, but we were founded in 1842, which by U.S. standards is quite old. Um, we are located on what's known as the flagship campus of Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. Pretty much the whole town is devoted to the university. 
We at the, currently this year we are ranked number 30 in the entire country. Um, our international law program, our tax program, IP are all top ranked. Uh, we're on the forefront of cybersecurity law and information privacy. Um, one, Indiana University Mauer School of Law, Mauer School of Law has um, initiated many of the newest initiatives with, in cybersecurity law, and we have some of the uh, proponents of that located here on campus. Recently, in International Jurist, we were voted uh, or ranked A-plus in all four of the categories relevant to LLM programs, which we're very, very happy about. Okay, there we go. Whoa. <laughs> okay, now, now we're going to show you a bunch of pictures of our beautiful campus. Um, it really is a striking place, and we really hope that you will be able to visit. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, fine works of art. That's a theater. That's our um, uh, our art museum, and finally a view down the beautiful, quaint main street of town. Okay, um, we've been ranked number one in the nation for work-life balance. So. Not only is this town full of students, but it's also full of people who love living here. Um, we have incredible arts, um, incredible sporting events, um, many theaters, lots of international cuisine. So it is a, a small city of 30,000, but there is much more going on here than the size would otherwise indicate. So speaking specifically about our graduate program, in addition to a regular LLM, we have an LLM with a thesis, a one semester certificate, a Master of Comparative Law, an SJD, um, and a PhD in Law and Democracy, which is quite an unusual degree. Um, and we also have the opportunity for students to get an advanced standing JD. The LLM is really uh, fantastic because not only can you do a general LLM that allows you flexibility in choosing your classes, you can also specialize in certain areas of law that might interest you. So, for example, these here, business and commercial law, financial regulation, information privacy and cybersecurity I mentioned before. IP has two tracks, a general IP and a patent law. Uh, international and Comparative Law and Globalization, which is very strong here at Mauer, and then the American Law Track that can be a general or focus on a bar exam to uh, get students prepared for taking a U.S. bar exam. And these LLM specializations require 12, about 12 credits. And an entire LLM degree is made of 24 credits. So about half of your credits would go toward a specialization if that's something that you would be interested in. If not, the regular LLM program, as I mentioned, is 24 credits. Four of those credits are required courses. So an introduction to American law course and a legal discourse and writing course. Those are the only two absolutely required requirements for the LLM program, that's a total of four credits, that leaving again 20 credit hours for you to choose from uh, many, many variety of courses here that focus on specific areas of law. For the bar exam, uh, many students are interested in preparing for, taking, and hopefully passing a bar exam in the United States. Um, not every state allows foreign trained lawyers to take a bar exam in the U.S. Uh, in fact, very few do. The most popular is New York State. And um, we do, because of the, the way that our LLM program is set up, that is very helpful for preparing students to take the bar exam. Um, we we also have information sessions throughout the year for students to be prepared, and we have uh, representatives from various uh, bar exam course um, prep courses that 
uh, are, that come to campus and provide courses to get students uh, ready for the bar exam. Um, the patent bar is also of interest to some of our students. And I, I think the, the main thing to know as you are considering whether or not you want to do an LLM degree, whether you want to sit for a U.S. bar exam, is to plan in advance. Know what the requirements are, know what the deadlines are, and make sure that you follow all of the application procedures. So if you're considering studying abroad, obviously you want to gain a wider perspective and get the full experience and I think you will find that here. We have at any given time more than 20 countries represented uh, by our graduate class um, including those on on screen uh, which are always evolving with each new class. Uh, the other nice thing is that you will take a majority of your courses with our JD class and so not only will you get the international experience, but you will be sitting with JD students from most of our 50 states. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we are currently ranked as one of the top 30 programs, and among those top 30, we are also among one of the lowest priced. So high value, um, small class sizes for each student, uh, for each eight students, we have a faculty member, which is a very good ratio, um, and we have a great college atmosphere here with lots of culture and other experiences outside of the classroom as well. There are a lot of numbers on the screen there, but I will hit on some of the, um, the more important ones. As I mentioned, we have a large JD class of roughly 500 students. We have about 20 or more uh, international countries represented by our graduate program of 65 students. Uh, the faculty, student-faculty ratio again is about 8 to 1, uh, which also is one of the, uh, the best in the country. Our tuition is roughly 45,000 uh, for the LLM program. We have other programs there. and. Our cost of living is less than 15000 um, for the duration of the program here, which is, is really a low-cost um, opportunity for you as well. So in addition to our low cost, um, we're offering roughly 50% tuition discount or $25,000. That's in addition to the grant from Fulbright all of the other benefits that they're offering, and basically it leaves you with a living cost of give or take about 15000 uh, for your time here in Bloomington. Um, that can be a little more or a little less depending on your lifestyle, but it's a very comfortable um, cost of living. All right, Emma mentioned that um, Irish students especially those of you who live in Dublin, might be quite concerned about the ability to find housing wherever you go in the U.S. Um, you would be in good shape in Bloomington. There is um, there's a large supply of housing stock. You can live on campus in a, a dormitory or an on-campus apartment. Um, the You can see here some costs for the residence halls, and, and they really do vary. Um, some are, are pretty basic and some are, are quite fancy. Um, so you go from $400 a month for a shared two-bedroom unfurnished apartment without air conditioning up to $900 for a one-bedroom unfurnished apartment in a fancy building. You see the residence hall costs as well there. Uh, and then uh, most of our, our LLM students uh, do tend to live off campus. Um, we have a lot of housing very close to the law school. Um, and we have a very active graduate and professional student government, and one of the services they offer is a housing uh, location service. Um, so you can use that. And then here in Bloomington, uh, here at Maurer, we actually have a special, a very special thing we call Irish House. Um, this is, in fact, the Irish House, where for the past five years, um, Irish students have lived it is very close to campus, as we'll show you on a map. That's a five-bedroom house. The red, the red dot is uh, 
<laughs> is where the house is, and then Maurer School of Law is indicated um, up top. If you decide to come here, you could certainly be considered for living in Irish House, which is about $500 per month uh, per bedroom. These are some of the former residents of Irish House. Look closely, maybe you know some of them. We have flexible start options for you, so regardless of your situation, uh, we, we have an upcoming start date for you. So we, have, we allow a class to enter in January, uh, which is somewhat unusual, and the typical fall start. Um, you can see the application timeline there, which is actually rolling and somewhat flexible to the point that we need basically to have enough time to process your visa documents. Um, You'll be working with me through the application process. I'm fast and friendly, and we'll make it easy for you. And finally, please connect with us. We are on social media everywhere, or try to be. So we would love to hear from you. We would love to answer any questions, uh, and we look forward to uh, possibly meeting you in the future. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Well, thank you, Emma, uh, and thank you to our guests in Ireland and uh, to my guests here in the States uh, from Indiana and Penn. Uh, I am Sean O'Brien, Director of the LLM Program in International Human Rights Law and Coordinator of the JSD Program in International Human Rights Law here at Notre Dame Law School. Um, and from my description of the program, you can tell that we have a little bit of a, a different beast here. Uh, our LLM program that I'm here to talk about today and that we have the scholarship for is exclusively focused on international human rights law. It was the first and still one of the only programs in the United States to have this exclusive focus of preparing lawyers for, with the knowledge and skills that they need to be better human rights advocates. We have this focus, this exclusive focus, because of our history. Our center was founded in 1973 by this gentleman here, Father Ted Hesburgh, when he was fired from his role as chair of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission, which is somewhat akin to the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission. Here in this photograph, he's at a protest at Soldier Field where the Chicago Bears uh, attempt to play pre professional football. Um, and he's photographed here with uh, Reverend Martin Luther King, um, with whom he found common cause in the civil rights struggles, especially in the 1960s. Our LLM was founded in 1988 when Father Hesburgh was in South Africa with his friend, Judge Richard Goldstone. Uh, Judge Goldstone ended up uh, with a, an illustrious international career, uh, but at that time he was a judge in South Africa using his judgeship to attack apartheid from the inside. And Father Hesburgh said to Just Justice Goldstone, what can we do to help in your struggle? And Goldstone answered, educate our lawyers. And that was the genesis of our LLM and JSD programs in international human rights law, which today have graduated more than 400 human rights lawyers from over 100 countries. This year we have our largest class to date, which is 24 human rights lawyers from 17 countries. We typically have 18 to 20, but this year uh, the, uh, the application pool was so large and our scholarship supply large enough as well that we were able to bring in uh, 24 lawyers. And you can read more about uh, the profiles of our current class and see how similar their backgrounds are to your backgrounds uh, right here on our webpage under current class. Our lawyers come to us from different parts of the human rights movement. Some have worked for government. Others have worked for international, regional, or local NGOs. Others uh, have come from early careers in academia. Um, uh, but all are interested in using the law as a tool to protect 
and advance and more fully understand human dignity. What are these lawyers doing at Notre Dame? Well, similar to my colleagues from Indiana, they have a curriculum made up of required courses and elective courses. Our required courses are not designed to prepare you to become a lawyer here in the United States or to take the U.S. bar exam. They're designed to prepare you for a career in international human rights law. Uh, in the fall semester, which begins in August, our program begins in August every year and ends in May, you will take international law um, and uh, public international law course, a class called Foundations of International Human Rights Law, where you explore and uh, uh, deconstruct uh, the uh, idea of human dignity and the assumptions uh, and kind of image of the human person that lies behind the uh, positive law of international human rights law. You also take a class on accountability for gross human rights violations, which is kind of a class on transitional justice or how societies emerge from periods of gross human rights violations. And finally, you take a course, uh, International Human Rights Research and Writing course. That's a course that I teach uh, that prepares you to do research uh, using the methods and sources of international human rights law and then also prepares you for your research papers and potentially for your thesis if you choose the option of writing a thesis. That leaves you with some space in the fall semester for electives. Uh, we have a very deep and, uh, and broad uh, uh, human rights curriculum here in the law school. So in addition to those required courses, you could take courses on an international environmental law or U.S. civil rights law um, or uh, globalization and multinational corporate responsibility. Um, you can also uh, um, leave the law school and take courses uh, in other institutes around campus because our law school is located physically right at the heart of uh, our university. I'll get into that more in a second. In the spring semester, you have very fewer required courses. A human rights practice course, which I teach, uh, that explores human rights fact-finding, monitoring, reporting, and interaction with the UN human rights mechanisms and a course on regional human rights protection, looking at the inter-American, European, African, and different sub-regional human rights systems. You have the option of writing an LLM thesis. Some uh, students are preparing for a career in academia. They find the thesis is, uh, is a good uh, endeavor for them to undertake while they're doing their LLM. Uh, and once again, you can leave the law school and take uh, courses at different uh, institutes around the university. You'll see at the top of our webpage that not only are we part of the law school, our LLM is a law degree program, and so your primary home is here in the law school, but our center, which hosts the LLM, is also part of the new Keough School of Global Affairs, which is actually just uh, opened in August as the first new school at the university in nearly 100 years. And as part of this Keough School of Global Affairs, the center joins six other institutes um, that are focused in some way on international studies. Uh, and you'll notice here our Kellogg Institute that focuses on issues of uh, integral human development uh, and democracy, our Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies, which prepares students for careers as, as mediators and conflict transformation specialists, different area studies institutes, including our Keough Naughton Institute, which uh, was founded in 1993 by Seamus Dean, um, and uh, as well as uh, the Naughton family uh, from Ireland. Um, and you might know about uh, Keough Naughton uh, Institute. Uh, they um, produced a award-winning film, uh, 1916, which is shown around the United States, around the world, and 
throughout Ireland on RTE. It was the winner of the Best Documentary Series uh, for the Irish Film and Television Awards. It was narrated by Liam Neeson. Um, and uh, so the Keogh Naughton Institute is the home for the study of Irish language, Irish history, Irish culture, uh, and really is one of the top centers for this in uh, the entire world. Uh, our faculty include, included Seamus Heaney, still includes Seamus Dean, um, and uh, a number of other uh, high-profile uh, uh, scholars uh, of different areas of uh, of Irish language and politics and history and culture. Here's a photograph from last year with your president, uh, Michael Higgins, uh, at Notre Dame. Uh, I recently had dinner here at Notre Dame with Mary McAleese, also president uh, of Ireland. Uh, she taught a course here in the law school on children's rights uh, while she was here. Um, Mary Robinson's been a frequent visitor here to Notre Dame as well. Um, in addition to the Keogh uh, Institute here on campus, uh, Notre Dame also has a presence in Ireland at O'Connell House on um, uh, Marion Square. Uh, this is the former home of uh, Daniel O'Connell. Uh, in addition to uh, our, our presence in Dublin at O'Connell House, uh, the university is also uh, entered into a 30-year lease agreement with Kyle Moore Abbey, and we host uh, at that uh, gorgeous uh, uh, County Galway location um, conferences and retreats and courses uh, um, that the university as a whole is uh, um, eager to take advantage of uh, hosting uh, events at that location. So the Irish connection here at Notre Dame uh, runs very, very deep. Uh, while at Notre Dame, in addition to all things Irish, uh, what else would you be doing in addition to your schoolwork? You may take part in our center's research programs, which at the current time focus on strengthening the regional human rights systems. We have a, a long history uh, of partnership, especially with the African Commission on Human Rights and both the Inter-American Commission and the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. We have a program um, uh, on human trafficking that not, not only works on documenting the role of uh, different Catholic, uh, especially female Catholic, uh, f female women religious actors uh, in uh, the struggle against uh, human trafficking, uh, but also we're doing a study on um, comparative reparation schemes around the world uh, uh, for um, studying the ways in which countries have criminalized and then provide reparations for survivors of human trafficking. Our other research programs uh, are focused on transitional justice. Uh, we are the uh, translator of the uh, Chilean Truth Commission report, the Peruvian Truth Commission report. These Truth Commission reports were then shared with uh, our graduates in South Africa who hand delivered them to the South Africans in 1994 uh, as they were designing their uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And so those Notre Dame translations uh, of the Latin American experiences were formative for the South African experience. Um, our newest uh, research uh, program is on Catholic social teaching and human rights. We are created a database uh, online in which um, all the major documents of international human rights law and Catholic social teaching are searchable and comparable so we can understand the influence of each kind of body of thought on the other and where one is uh, speaking to uh, um, uh, different issues than the other body is and and uh, and um, kind of see that uh, interplay that dialogue historically um, and over time. So you might take place, take part in these different research programs. I think the other reason that you'd want to come to Notre Dame Law School, in addition to our curriculum, in addition to our faculty uh, mentorship, in addition to our research programs, would be our internship program. And that's because 
each year we dedicate a uh, significant sum of money to send our graduates on professional internship experiences once they graduate. Um, our uh, interns, I'm sorry, our graduates have been placed all around the world uh, at uh, different uh, intergovernmental bodies, uh, international, regional, and local NGOs. Um, and for example, uh, just last year we had students go to uh, uh, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights in Geneva, to the uh, uh, Human Rights Watch, to the Inter-American Commission, the Inter-American Court, uh, the African Commission on Human Rights, uh, the ACLU. We have placed students at all different types of uh, international um, hum human rights uh, uh, placements that then turn into employment. Um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, our uh, most recent, actually our, our inaugural recipient of the Irish Fulbright Award, and that was uh, Ruth Cormican. Uh, Ruth uh, was a 2016 graduate of the National U University of Ireland at Galway. Um, while at Notre Dame, she studied uh, business and human rights. She studied with Professor Doug Castle, who's one of our faculty experts, especially on the subject of business and human rights. She traveled with him to London and Geneva as his research assistant, uh, helping him in his uh, work on preparing a draft of a international treaty on the human rights obligations of transnational corporations. After uh, During her time here, she participated in um, international uh, moot court competition, and uh, her team won the uh, best team in the Americas and then competed at uh, Oxford. And then after graduation, uh, she went back to National University of Ireland at Galway uh, to the Irish Center for Human Rights with our friends Ray Murphy and Kathleen Cavanaugh, Shane Darcy, uh, and Professor Emeritus Bill Shabis. And she studied uh, uh, and wrote a, uh, a policy paper on uh, business and human rights and the issue of the International Treaty on the Human Rights Obligations of Transnational Corporations. And then in my email inbox on Monday morning of this week, I, I, I got an update from Ruth, and uh, she was just hired uh, as a graduate policy advisor for human rights in Ireland's Department of Foreign, Foreign Affairs and Trade in Geneva. So that's a little bit about her tra what her trajectory looked like. She was just graduated uh, in, in, in the spring of 2016. Uh, came to Notre Dame, and with the help of this internship assistance and then um, our, our career placement, she's now uh, employed uh, on behalf of the Irish government uh, in Geneva. How do you apply for our program? Uh, on our webpage, uh, visit the Apply section, and it will walk you how to apply uh, uh, in an easy fashion uh, our online application. Uh, which is due in January, January 15th of 2018. Uh, decisions are sent out in March uh, or early April of 2018, and we would hope to see you on campus uh, in August of 2018. The way you can contact me for your unanswered questions uh, uh, would be through email or through phone, and my contact information, Sean O'Brien, uh, uh, is uh, here on our webpage. You have to notice I'm, I'm not the only Sean O'Brien here on campus. Uh, the Irish connection is deep. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, my best friend on campus is also Sean O'Brien. Uh, that just shows you uh, what it's like to be a, an Irish woman or an Irishman uh, here in, in South Bend, Indiana. So thank you for your time. Thank, thank you to uh, my colleagues at Indiana and Penn, and thank you to Emma. And I can turn back the presentation now. This is a picture of Penn Law. Um, uh, our law school is for interconnected uh, buildings around a courtyard. It's really quite a beautiful building that marries some very old architecture, maybe not old by Irish standards, but by U.S. standards. The, oh. By U.S. standards, Philadelphia is, uh, you know, is ancient with the, where the Constitution uh, was drafted and sort of the birthplace of our nation. Um, and it is in University City, which is in Philadelphia. So it's um, 
sort of a short walk to the main downtown in a very beautiful Ivy League, um, green, leafy type of uh, university. Um, so can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so um, again, by, by US standards, a really old law school is founded by Benjamin Franklin, who are part of the Ivy League. We've um, been taking LLM students here for a really, really long time, um, and we are a very, very highly ranked uh, law school. Um, there's a little picture of Ben Franklin. People, uh, students come and sit next to Ben Franklin and, uh, and um, rub his head and touch him for good luck. Uh, so let's go to the next um, slide. All right. Um, so. Um, why Penn Law? Like, why come here? Um, there are a lot of uh, wonderful uh, opportunities in the U.S. for LLM programs. So we have a world-class uh, faculty, really internationally known um, scholars, um, but our celebrated scholars are also devoted teachers. Um, we have um, a culture of collegiality here that uh, stems from accessible, faculty who are interested in teaching. We have tremendous support um, for our students with staff. Um, and uh, we have a very robust summer program to get our students really well situated. Um, we also have a tremendous amount of uh, LLM and uh, JD interaction. Um, another um, aspect of Penn Law, which is really unique, is our Wharton Business and Law Certificate. It is a program that runs concurrent to our LLM. The classes are in the evening, and it's an opportunity for our students, and about half of them do do this program, um, to gain the uh, skill, business skills to be better, better able to communicate um, with their clients. It's custom designed um, so that it's really for law students, for foreign trained attorneys to um, to gain business skills, um, uh, and it's taught at Wharton, which is really um, the premier <clears throat> business school in the U.S., uh, and it's taught by their faculty at Wharton, which is just about a, depending on how fast you walk, we'll call it a 10-minute walk. Um, all Penn campus, everything's here, all the, the, the medical school, the business school, all, we're all on one campus. Um, it's, um, and if you're admitted to the LLM program, there's no separate application process. You're, it's just a matter, a matter of enrolling. And even if you decide you don't want to do that, we're a very interdisciplinary um, school, and you can take a class at Wharton or a class at Lauder, our international studies school, or a class at um, any of the other graduate schools here on campus. Um, next slide, please. Apologies. No, there you are. All right. So here's a picture of the law school um, during the day, and you can see Ben Franklin and um, a, a, a um, picture of Wharton. It's really a very um, beautiful old campus with some new, very um, interesting um, architecture. We've had a few new buildings that have won um, some architecture awards that are very, um, you know, very modern as well. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so Philadelphia. Um, my husband was just in Dublin, and he said he, he felt a certain a affinity between Philadelphia and Dublin. He decided to go with his best friend to see uh, U2 play in Dublin um, for their 50th birthday party, and they said it was just a tremendous, tremendous experience. Um, anyway, so this is a picture of um, William Penn on top of our um, City Hall, so we have all sorts of historic um, things here. But we also, it's become a really booming, fun city. Um, we have charming, safe residential neighborhoods with affordable and convenient housing. You're welcome to live on campus. We have plenty of um, on-campus housing, but so many of our students choose to live either uh, near the university or in the main part of the city, which is just, I walk to work from the main part of the city. It takes me a and I'm a little old. It takes me about 15, 20 minutes. Um, so, uh, you know, there's just a, really an abundance of lovely places to live and restaurant scenes and art and theater. And prof we have wonderful professional uh, sports teams. Um, 
there's a very um, large um, Irish American community in Philadelphia, um, and it's it's just a really fun, bustling, um, dynamic city. It's recently won like I think it was National Geographic's best city to visit. It's really an up and coming. Um, Place. It's also about halfway, give or take, between New York and D.C., a little closer to New York. So it's easy. You can take a bus, an inexpensive bus or a train up to New York or down to D.C. for the day. So um, uh, it's really very um, conveniently located um, for um, whether you want to explore the U.S. socially, uh, culturally, or for um, business meetings. Um, so next slide, please. All right, so I mentioned our summer program. It's really, uh, I think, a highlight of our LLM program. It's a five-week program just for our LLMs, and it is a mandatory part of the program. It usually starts the first, the last Friday in July or the first Friday in August. Um, you receive um, five credits uh, during the program. You take a foundation in U.S. legal um, uh, U.S. law, as well as a, a research and writing class, um, and this really allows our LLM students to be completely ready academically in the fall and spring semesters, because after the summer program, you're taking all your classes with the JD students. You're doing clinics, you're doing clubs, you're so side by side with them, and you are really prepared, um, because, you know, uh, Penn is a collegial, lovely, supportive environment, but it also is a very um, rigorous academic institution, and this allows our uh, LLM students to really perform well. Um, and during this summer, there's also a lot of fun things that uh, we organize, like you can see here. We do a banquet in Chinatown, team building exercises, visits to the art museum, um, a hike, um, also, we do a lot of professional development during that time. We talk about, uh, for those interested in taking the New York Bar Exam, we have, our, we have a, um, a counselor uh, devoted specifically to LLM career, um, and she'll bring in alumni to talk about career opportunities in the U.S. and, um, you know, uh, different um, skills um, to develop in that way, and just a really great opportunity for LLMs to really get to know each other, to become really comfortable in Philadelphia and, um, and in the law school um, before that fall semester um, begins. And then once the fall and spring um, is there, your uh, students must take a minimum of 19 credits over the two semesters. Um, we've had students take clinics, you know, entrepreneurship, mediation, transnational, which um, tends to be uh, focused on um, uh, immigration and um, um, like human uh, rights type of issues, and as well as an intellectual property. Um, this year, all of our journals um, accepted uh, LLMs except for our law review. They tend to be very involved in journals. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, we have a lot of cross-disciplinary opportunities here at the University of Pennsylvania, which has the largest number of international students, over 6,000 of any Ivy League school. Next slide, please. All right. Um, so we're um, very much involved with pro bono work here. Penn Law was the first U.S. law school to require JDs to do 70 hours of pro bono work uh, to graduate. Um, we don't require that of our LLMs, but most do a significant amount, and we have a very robust um, uh, um, program uh, and ways to access those kind of opportunities. We have an attorney mentor program as well as a cohort um, program for JDs and LLMs to connect socially. Um, as I mentioned, we have uh, a career counselor. Um, who does a lot of programming and individually with students. We also participate in the ISIP job fair at NYU in January. We have lots of, you know, being in Philadelphia, there's so many opportunities, really more than we students can take advantage of. Um, trips to courts, law firms, we, there are innumerable events on campus, um, in the law school. It's really um, 
difficult for students to, to figure out what to do on a given day because there's so much. Um, at Penla, there are 90 plus clubs, everything from soccer, a lot of our, or as you say, football, a lot of our, that's a picture of some LLMs. Um, our LLM students tend to be very involved in our activities. They're, you know, some of them are um, quite, like we have an international uh, human rights group, um, we have an arbitration club, but we also have things like soccer or bowling. Um, we have a lot of social things. The LLMs themselves during the year will do a few parties on their own, but they also do uh, a lot of events with the JDs. Our LLMs do a lot in Philadelphia. They go out to restaurants, to nightlife, um, for these sports. They're, they tend to be very, um, take advantage of Philadelphia to a, to a great extent. Next slide, please. This is just a little to show this year's class. Um, you know, we have a really wide range of um, applicants and students, really quite diverse. Next slide, please. Um, oh, and I, did, I, I, I didn't include a, uh, a, a, a slide on this, but last year we received over our, um, 1,400 applicants for 118 spots. So we are competitive, but we are very interested in um, top applicants or strong applicants from Ireland. So don't let that um, number um, scare you. We're, we are interested in you. Here we have this wonderful partnership um, with Fulbright. Um, uh, so uh, I sort of have the details on here. Um, you could look on the website um, to do that as well. This is a, a picture of uh, last year's class. I don't have this year's class up yet. This is our website, and I'll just give you a very brief tour. Um, and this just, you know, every day we have something new and exciting. Um, so this is sort of why the certificate financing, which includes um, information on a bunch of scholarships, um, the LM program, and this is, it just uh, is a, admissions. This is where you're going to find the information on our deadlines and how to apply. Um, um, you, everything has to go through L, uh, LSAC. Um, we have an early notification. We have a December 15th deadline. I probably shouldn't say this, but we sometimes will grant um, uh, extensions. Um, we do try to get it in, but if you're you know, running a little late, don't be scared off. We have an opportunity on our website. You can ask a, a, a link to ask for an extension. Um, and then this just talks about the different uh, materials. Um, so that's um, it. I, I know I really appreciate um, everyone's attention. Um, I really encourage you to consider um, applying to Penn Law. We really value our Irish students and you know, we're a, a law school that has a lot opportunities for all sorts of students, whether your interest is in corporate law, IP law, criminal law, human rights law, um, you know, uh, cybersecurity. We're really um, a, a kind of a full, full service law school, and our LLM is just a general LLM, and students are able to craft the curriculum that best uh, serves their academic and professional needs. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Elise. Um, so uh, we have, we're, we're a little bit over, but we do have time for some questions. If anyone wants to ask any questions now, uh, Elise, I was going to ask you actually in terms of accommodation. There um, is is it easy to come by? I suppose. Yeah, it really is, um, and there's just a tremendous range in terms of what you want for a budget. You can live quite cheaply if you want to live in a house with a bunch of other students on campus, or you can live quite um, quite um, luxuriously um, in a high-rise, fancy apartment. Um, we do have on-campus housing, and you can navigate to that um, on our website to find out about the, the So there's options. lots of different options. Yeah. Okay. Great. students use that, but there's just so many other, I kind of encourage, and we have an office of off-campus housing um, that helps students who uh, want to explore, um, you know, uh, non-campus housing. Excellent. That's great. Okay. We have a few questions coming in now. 
how much is the monetary award from Fulbright? Um, well, that will vary generally. So generally our panel will assess each application. And if your application was to be successful, they would basically judge um, by a stipend, a living stipend essentially. So um, they, that can be kind of up to about $20,000. Um, and then you would also have your, your partial tuition waiver from whichever host institution you choose. So there can be extra costs that you will need to cover, like um, you know, to make up the, the, the rest of the tuition fee, etc. But um, the best thing to do, I suppose, is to get in touch with our awards manager um, and let her know what your plans are, um, tell her your situation, um, and, and they can advise you, you know, on how to either go about finding extra funds or um, you know, what people have done in the past because we have had quite a lot of students who have gone to do LLMs. Um, and somebody else asked, is the grant from Fulbright separate to the $25,000 grants uh, from individual universities? So yes, exactly. It's uh, an additional um, grant. So you would get the partial tuition waiver from one of the three host institutions and then you would get your Fulbright grant on top of that as well. Any other questions? Uh, how do we contact the Fulbright manager you just mentioned? That um, hopefully the, the slide, our Fulbright slide, is still on the screen there. So that email awards at Fulbright.ie. It has an extra dot in there by accident. So it's just awards at Fulbright.ie. If you contact them, um, that's kind of one of your first steps, I suppose, in terms of applying for your Fulbright award. Um, if you contact either Paula or Sonia, our awards managers. They will, um, through that email address, they will send you out the guidelines and the link to our online application. Um, and then, of course, you'd apply to your um, host institution separately. Um, and Elise is just pointing there, pointing out there that if you if you have any questions for Penn Law, you can uh, email her. Um, also, what I'll do is actually I'll circulate an email to all participants, everyone who signed up for today's webinar, just giving you the contact details for our presenters, if that's okay with our presenters, I think I think it is, just judging from, from last year. Um, so I will also just send you some materials that, that they've forwarded to me as well for further information. Any other questions before we wrap up? Well, as I say, we will uh, circulate the contact details to all our participants, um, and we will be here to contact by phone at the, the number up on the screen there, 01660-7670, if you have any queries, or get in touch with us at awards at fulbright.ie with any queries you do have. Um, and as I did mention as well, for anyone who missed um, the slides earlier, uh, we, we have a webinar on the general application process for Fulbright. Um, so it's, that's up on our YouTube site, Fulbright Ireland. Um, and it's a good idea just to have a look through that to, to run through the application process um, for yourselves as well. Okay. Um, Dear Mid, sorry, is just asking, is there only a one Fulbright award per institution? It really depends each year. So in the past, um, you know, sometimes there's been more than one law award, um, but Fulbright awards in general are all disciplines, so it really depends on the competition in all the other, other disciplines as well, I suppose, um, and the amount of funding available. So it can vary year on year. Um, so any other questions for us, for any of our presenters? Okay, thank you.